Lay's, now known as Frito-Lay, was founded in 1932, and during its first decade, Herman Lay sold chips out of, where else? The trunk of his car. In the 60s, the company adapted its famous slogan, Bet You Can't Eat Just One, and shortly after, merged with PepsiCo. Today, Frito-Lay snacks own 59% of the savory snack market. Its lineup includes the likes of Doritos, Tostitos, Fritos, Cheetos, Sun Chips, Ruffles, Funyuns, and many, many more. But today we try three brand new flavors of its classic Lay's brand, served to us from the one and only Mr. Chip. So sit back and enjoy as we ask, you tried it? You tried that. Lay's Chip episode. Here we are. I'm Nick Novak with my pals Chad Hancock. Howdy. Nick Geiger. Hey, what's up? Mr. Chip, you've uh, given us a challenge today. We're the only of yourself, and that's to try out a couple new brands of Lay's. Where did you find these? Yeah, pretty excited. I am Mr. Chip. You sound it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really am. I mean, other than, well, two of them I'm very excited for. We can get on that in a bit. So I found these at the CVS in the train station across from my work. Lay's always has like these uh, flavor contests. This is a little different. So usually they do like a flavor contest where that's people submit flavors and then they'll make them and then one might win and they might keep that flavor, which has been a bummer in the past because there's been some really good flavors that I wish they kept. Like they had a cheesy garlic bread one that was fantastic and I, I would have eaten it by the bag. That one was great. And they had a really good, um, I think it was like bacon mac and cheese or something like that that I thought was all right. So this one is more of a, it looks like they just created what they're calling Tastes of America, which are regionally specific flavors of chip. So I don't know if you could get all the, you could get all the three of these by you, Chad, or no. I had to, I sent them to you, but were they available around in your area? I've seen the bacon wrapped jalapeno one in the store, but not the other two. So I don't think they would have deep dish pizza out here. Yeah, that's probably true. All right. Well, one place that you'd be a scumbag to serve a chip at would be your wedding. And Chad recently attended a wedding. Why don't you tell us about it? Sure. So over Labor Day weekend, I was near Sacramento, just outside Sacramento, a town called Elk Grove for a wedding. It was pretty interesting wedding, actually. Not really like any wedding I've ever been to. The bride... Her family is Nigerian, so she, you know, Nigerian immigrants, and the groom, his family is Pakistani. So there was sort of this, like, you know, interesting cult, like, mending or merging of like both cultures. They had parts of the ceremony that were Pakistani, and then parts of the reception that were Nigerian. You know, the bride and groom changed outfits halfway through from Pakistani outfits to uh, traditional Nigerian outfits and did like a second entrance again. That stuff was all like a lot of fun. We had a really great time at the wedding overall, but there was um, there was a couple of funny things that that I wanted to recap about it. The, the first part was there was just sort of like this um, there was this weird kind of DJ who was a little I don't want to say that he was like slimy, but he was definitely greasy. <laughs> it's just a level up from slimy. <laughs> I'm gonna say how is that different? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like slightly better than slimy. Okay, okay. He came on to the a uh, loudspeaker like or onto the microphone pretty early on to when the bride and groom were going to get ready to make their first entrance. He was trying to sort of get everybody to sit down, but he was very half-hearted about the way he did it. So he just comes onto the mic and he's like, uh, if everybody could, you know, take your seat, please. We'll, we'll get started with things uh, in about five minutes here. So there was his flaw was he said that they were going to get started in five minutes. So you don't tell people to take your seat when they're going to get started in five minutes because everybody's just like, oh, well, I can ignore that. Like I can wait five minutes or whatever. So then <laughs> like four or five minutes go by and he comes on again. He's like, if everyone could please take your seat, we're going to get started here pretty soon. Again, everybody completely ignores him because he just is not talking with any authority or anything like that. So it's like 1 a.m. and he hasn't gotten people to take their seats yet. <laughs> Please, everybody. <laughs> Many things. And the, the place is closing soon. <laughs> right. I have another wedding I have to go do tomorrow. <laughs> so... Then he gets on a third time about a minute later, and he's like, everyone, please take your seat. We're getting started. I shouldn't have to tell you more than once to sit down. <laughs> wow. That's, oh, jeez. <laughs> I lost it, because I was just like, this is the problem you created yourself, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was just sort of a funny thing for like a wedding DJ to to say, you know, because you're trying to build like a mood of merriment or whatever, and he's just chastising us for <laughs> talking to each other. Sit down. I'm looking at you, old lady, and you. <laughs> The bride or the groom is being a real asshole right now. <laughs> the bride and groom came there, came in during their entrance, and he just pointed at him and was like, "Sit the fuck down." <laughs> <laughs> After that third time, everybody sat down because then, but the, not because of that, because they started playing the music that was indicating that like people were going to be coming in. <laughs> so that was when finally people got the hint. Then there was this other pretty funny part where. There, so I was trying to research this later, and and there's some Wikipedia info about it. But there's this part in some Pakistani wedding cultures where it's like this whole sort of traditional. The best way to describe it is like a milk transaction. From what I was reading about it, apparently this just you know goes way back to when like marriage was sort of like a lot more transactional kind of thing. Like I'm buying your daughter from you or whatever. And so it's something like where the, as part of the negotiation process for like how much the daughter is worth or whatever, the family of the bride has to offer up some quantity of milk to the family and friends of the groom. So they they start doing the ceremony. They don't really explain what's going on. So for those of us who are like just completely ignorant Americans like myself, we're just like, what's going on? Because the, the, the couple of women just sort of walk up to the bride and groom with just a big goblet full of milk. <laughs> and then a couple of the groom's buddies come up. Now, most of these people, they're like all pretty young, like, uh, you know, in their 20s, they've either or maybe early 30s. So it's, you know, just a bunch of kids and they're not really taking it like very seriously, as you might imagine. They're just kind of doing it because it's like this fun thing to do. But they're trying to pass a mic, one microphone around to everybody to sort of, you know, so that people can hear what's going on with this, this bartering. But because there is only one microphone and they're passing it around, you only get like sort of parts of sentences as they pass it around. So the whole thing is just impossible to follow what's going on. Wait, did you say bartering? So they're negotiating how much milk? That's right. Yeah, it's like... How much of this one goblet they're going to take? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a goblet with maybe like three cups of milk in it or something. And they were just trying to decide like, well, if I drink that much milk, then, you know, what are you going to do for me or something? Like it was this whole weird negotiating that we couldn't quite understand. Please tell me before you go further that... There was a moment near the end of the night when someone said, where's the milk we bartered for? And then it was you with cake all over your face and you were drinking the milk. <laughs> <laughs> Dunking cookies in it. <laughs> the weirdest part was because you could only half hear what people were saying. At one point, one of the groom's friends said something like the full sentence was something like, well, if that's the deal, then the two sisters are going to make out like bandits. But all we heard from the microphone was the two sisters are going to make out. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was kind of looking around like, wait, what is the, what are they negotiating here? <laughs> I was all ready for some hot sister on sister action. Right. I shouldn't have to ask you more than once to make out. <laughs> Help me understand the scale. So a woman could not be worth more than three cups of milk. That's the top of the scale. That's like a high end bride. Three cups. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't know. There's there's a whole lot going into it. And like, if I even try to explain it, it's going to be so insensitive or whatever. But yeah, I gave no cups for my wife. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wonder if the thought was that centuries ago there was actually large quantities of things being traded for the marriage, correct? Oh, sure. Yeah, probably. This was just probably a small part of it, yeah. Right. Is it also Pakistani wedding tradition for the DJ to berate the guest? <laughs> but he did he did something else that I thought was kind of funny near the end was as the night got on and you know they got into the dancing and stuff, there was a lot of sort of more traditional Pakistani and Indian types of songs, but then intermixed with it was a lot of American hip hop songs. You know, a lot of weddings will save, they'll, they might play some hip hop songs, but they would maybe play like the clean version, but there was no censoring going on, whatever. So like the very first one that they played was like that song where it's like, to the window, to the wall, <laughs> to the sweat drops down my balls, to all these bitches crawl. <laughs> and like, we're kind of looking around, there's, you know, there's just everybody dancing and not caring and 
a bunch of old people around that either can't understand the words or don't know what's going the on. The DJ was like, I'm not going to say it again. All the bitches need to crawl. <laughs> he, so he did. So then this song was coming on that I forget the exact song, but it's something about a big bang. The, like the, the lyrics are like something like who's got a big bank and the DJ, he gets on the microphone and he had the microphone right up to his mouth. So everything was sort of muffled. And what he actually said was who's got a big bank. But because of the muffling, the way it sounded to me was who's got a big dick. And then a bunch of people in the audience all went like, Woo! <laughs> Chad, once again, hearing what he wants to hear. Just waving <laughs> his dick around. Yeah, oh, I, did, I did not cheer for that at all. <laughs> <laughs> did they play that classic Nine Inch Nails hit, I Want to Milk You Like an Animal? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the recap there. Overall, it was a fantastic time. Good. I look forward to referencing that for the next 20 minutes as we back <laughs> 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 on chips. <laughs> so we've got Three different kinds of chips we're going to try, as we spoke about before. We are going to use a five-point rating system, and that's a love debt, if we are really digging these chips, a like debt, indifferent to debt, dislike debt, and of course, hate debt. So let's, uh, what should we start out with? Let's get these ketchup out of the way, because they're the one I'm most curious about. Okay. So ketchup, I did look. This is apparently a popular thing in Canada, is ketchup chips, because there was some article of like, why Americans don't get the ketchup chip. This is the only one of the three that I'm not all that enthused about, but they're weird enough that we should try them. I'm very not enthused about these because ketchup is gross, but let's see how it goes. I'm thinking they're, I'm almost wondering if they taste like French fries and ketchup. It's just essentially potatoes and ketchup, which is common. Right. Uh, they smell like ketchup. They, they, they have a very strong smell for sure. Mm -hmm. It's very ketchupy. It's closer, you know, you almost smell like a little... Like, it smells closest to a barbecue chip of chips yeah. that I know. Like a tomato-based chip, anyway. It's kind of like a sweet aftertaste there at the end. That's the only place I really get the ketchup, other than the smell. Hmm. I I also was super curious about it when I read it. It just seems like such... I guess it makes sense, like you said, because we put ketchup on different potatoed items, but I've never seen them, had never seen or heard of them before. I don't... Hmm. You don't what? <laughs> I realized I was about to say I don't hate them, which is giving away part of the rating, so I should probably just wait until that part of it. You're up first anyway, so okay. what do you think of these ketchup? Well, I don't hate them. I already revealed that, so that's one rating. Right. What else don't you feel about them? Do you love them? Nope, don't love them. We're going to narrow the window. Oh, all right. oh, oh. <laughs> let's, let's hold off on that for now. I'm not a big ketchup guy. There are certain things I need to put ketchup on, and for me, that's hamburgers. And I know a lot of people in Chicago will crap on me for this, but I also put them on hot dogs, and I want them on a hot dog. And if you don't like it, come at me, bro. Um, don't actually come at me. <laughs> Other than that, though, like I'm not a guy who even dips my fries in ketchup. Like maybe some of the big like potatoy steak fry types, but not like if I go to McDonald's, I do not want any ketchup for those fries. I don't know what you guys think, but I also I'm not a big ketchup on fry guy. Me neither. Yeah, you hate tomatoes. So yep, these aren't horrible, but I don't. Like, want to buy them or finish this bag, probably. If they were out at a party and it was the only chip available, I probably would eat some. <laughs> <sighs> this is, like, really on the border between an indifferent and dislike. Mr. Chip! I know. I'm, I'm Mr. Chip, but I have, to, I have to have integrity when it comes to chips, then. If everyone's going to look to me as an expert in the chip world. You're also Captain Ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um... <laughs> I'm also the world's chief milk negotiator. I don't know if you knew that. All right. <laughs> You're also Major Mustard. Right. Yes. You're Lieutenant Lettuce. I'm, Lute I'm uh, Private Pickle Relish. I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Condiment King. <laughs> so. so a dislike <laughs> uh, to start off our ketchup. <laughs> yeah, I would crash your head. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yes, dislike that. I'll go ahead and second dislike that. I actually don't hate them. The sweetness is a little weird to me at the end, but they're not totally repulsive, but I'm never going to eat these again. So yeah, that's a dislike that. All right. I also, like Geiger, will put ketchup amongst some other things on a hot dog at times. I'll put it yeah. on a hamburger. So I'm not anti-ketchup at all. I will even, on occasion, do a ketchup mustard mix on my fries. So I'm not anti-ketchup, but 
I am anti these ketchup chips. I think they are terrible. I would not eat them again or recommend anybody eat them. I don't even like the smell. There's nothing about them I like. This is an easy hate that for me. Whoa! Novak! So a really terrible start here for the ketchup chip. So you're saying the rest of the chips don't have very far to catch up? (sighs) I'll wait. You can insert the laugh track right there, Chad. This is why nobody gave you milk <laughs> for your wife. <laughs> no, it's because it would make me poop. <laughs> Let's do the bacon wrapped jalapeno popper next, uh, since so they don't get any more stale for Chad. <laughs> Chad, let us uh, tell us the story of how these arrived to you. Yeah, I got a box from Geiger with snacks in it, addressed to Chad the serviceman Hancock. I opened up the box <laughs> and the bag of. Bacon wrapped jalapeno popper chips had exploded all over the box. So I haven't tasted them yet, but my wife gave them a shot and she immediately said, Ooh, these are stale, and then spit out the half of a chip that was in her mouth. So we'll see how this goes. They are wavy chips, though, which is a point in their favor. I always prefer the crinkle cut. Yeah. Now, do you guys like a bacon wrapped jalapeno popper? I, for one, love them i had them the first time at your house novak your wife made them Uh and i have made them several times since i love them i'm not a big jalapeno guy they're probably a little better than than i would think before eating them but i'm not a big i i would never like order these out or even ask my wife to make them uh, again but these are trying to think of what i taste do you like those chad have you had those before i don't like spicy all right so i don't i would just peel the bacon directly off of it and just eat that. <laughs> Chad, do you like strips of bacon? <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right. Good, good. These have a little spice. Yeah. But it's not crazy. I had this boss a couple of years, maybe probably 10 years ago now. And it, he was basically like a caricature. Like he was very similar to that, like boss at office space, you know, in that movie office space where he just like. Lumberg. Yeah, basically a lot like Lumberg. And what he did was, you know, he joined, he came onto the team and I think he wanted to like endear himself to the team. And so he tried to come up with like nicknames for everybody. I remember I had made the mistake of saying in one of the early meetings that he was around that like I, how much I liked bacon. So he decided that my nickname was going to be bacon because one time I said that I liked bacon. And so he would literally, he would just come over to the cubicle and just be like, bacon, what's happening? <laughs> I'm not sure what happened, but uh, he was supposedly married, and then later he asked one of the women if uh, she wanted to give him a blowjob, so that didn't go over well. That seemed like a real <laughs> tangent from the story about him calling you bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the rest of his criminal history. He used to always call me bacon, bacon, and then he killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> How many uh, goblets of milk did he offer that chick to blow him? <laughs> <laughs> He just wrapped a slice of bacon around his penis, and he was like, check out my jalapeno popper. <laughs> and then you came by, and you're like, oh, hey, I love bacon, and started blowing him. <laughs> All right, well, let's get to the ratings here. I will start us off. I think these are pretty good, actually. This is one where I didn't like it a lot uh, upon first bite, the first chip. I was almost ready to give these a dislike, but... I kept going and have really warmed up to them. I think the spice level is spot on. I will give them credit for that. It's uh, just enough to kind of keep you going back for the bag and keep you drinking. And I'm going to give them a like that. Ooh. That's kind of a surprising like that for me. Mm. Chad, what do you think about these guys? These are better than the ketchup, but not by much. To be honest, I think the only thing that redeems them is the fact that they're wavy. If these were regular... I'd probably feel about them the same way I feel about the ketchup, but there's, I, I they mine are stale for sure now that I've tried them, but I'm not going to hold that against them. That's Geiger's fault, not theirs. So what? Yeah, it's your <laughs> fault. <laughs> you should have pressurized the box appropriately before you. That's uh, probably true. I take that. <laughs> learn science. <laughs> nope. But that's they're still not good. I don't really taste any bacon actually, to be honest. So these are going to get a dislike that also for me. Hmm. All right. Yeah, you're right. There's not a ton of bacon. I'm sort of just middle of the road bacon guy. I don't love it or hate it. So I think a not strong bacon taste helped me out. Bacon. 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 Hey, I've done income tax evasion. (laughs) I, um, 
Bacon, I'm actually Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Bacon, that guy was the leader of Heaven's Gate. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Gagger? I would say I'm torn. Well, so I think they're good. What I would say is if we're trying to judge them on flavor accuracy, I don't necessarily – like if you had just given this to me in a bowl without the the packaging, I would never have picked – jalapeno or bacon or even cream cheese out of a hat probably like i think they're tasty but they don't really taste like that snack to me which i don't know if that makes sense but i do think they've got a decent amount of heat to them which i like i like spicy food there's just enough bacon flavor that i get it and i think the chip tastes good so for that reason i'll give it a like that i was really expecting that these would like knock my socks off but I think I just was expecting it to taste more of something, either more jalapeno-y or more bacony, and I got neither. They're good. I like the flavor. I just wish it was a bit stronger. All right. So I can still see your socks here and through Skype, so I can tell they didn't do their jab. Take off those <laughs> socks. Show me that toe jam. Oh, man. I actually am not wearing socks. I just mowed the lawn. They're nice and sweaty. Well, that's why they didn't blow your socks off. You they didn't couldn't. have them to begin with. That's false advertising. Yeah, it's really not fair of them. But let me put my socks on and eat another chip. Whoa, socks just flew off across the room. <laughs> Two likes and a dislike um, for the bacon-wrapped jalapeno popper wavy lay. And before we get to our final competitor, the deep dish pizza chip, uh, we've got a segment. Chad? So I put together a little game for you guys based on um, one time I was just browsing the internet. I don't even remember how I came across this. And I found some sort of really weird cookie names. So this game is something I put together. It's called Cookie or Cookie. What I have is I have a series of words. Each one is either a type of cookie from somewhere around the world, or it is something else that is not a cookie, but is still a real thing, like a real word or that means something. Sound good? Yeah, I'm in. All right. So Novak, you're going to go first. What? No, I'm kidding. It's fine. Uh, the first one should be fairly easy. Watch me get it wrong. Digestive. Digestive? Digestive. That cannot be a cookie. That's got to be cookie. Okay, Geiger. I believe that is a cookie. It is a cookie. It's a semi-sweet biscuit that they eat with tea in the UK. Oh. Did you know that, Geiger? Had you heard of that? Yes. <laughs> I am a worldly man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes. And I had seen that, actually. I've seen digestives in stores around the world when I was been traveling. And the first time I saw it, I was like, what is this? Like blown away. And then I've seen it all over the place now. Did your socks blow off? <laughs> yeah, my socks just completely blew off. Then they blew back on and then off again for extra measure. <laughs> okay, Geiger, you go first on this one. Frog eye. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, this is not a give me. Um, frog eye. I am going to say it's a cookie. I'm going to say cookie. Cookie. Novak is correct. Frog eye is a city in Alabama. Oh. <laughs> I thought they were going to be other foods. A frog eye is a frog's eye. <laughs> <laughs> it is a part of a frog which allows him to see. <laughs> Moving on. Alpha whore. Take it away, Novak. We've had a few of those before. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely more of a beta whore guy. But... Um... <laughs> I'm going to go with Cookie. Gagger. No, Mac, remember that total slut in college that used to climb on top of you and just be like, A, B, C, and she'd fuck you the whole time? Yeah, that was uh, Cindy Alphor. <laughs> that was her last name. She was really living <laughs> up to it. Um, <laughs> um, what did you say, Novak? You said Cookie? Yeah. Ugh. I guess just to be, no, I actually think it's a cookie as well. It is a cookie, yeah. It's basically two cookies with dulce de leche in the middle. Uh, it's very popular in South America. I hear also whores, like regular whores are popular down there. I could be wrong. <laughs> popular pretty much everywhere, right? <laughs> See, I could be wrong. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I <laughs> well, I don't know. I've not really talked to the people down there. I've just heard. Up next, Geiger, you're going first. <laughs> Bibble. Bibble? Yeah. Bibble. That is, kook that is kooky as hell, man. There's no way that's a cookie. It's called Bible, Hancock. Read <laughs> it's one. Called, it's called the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> a Bible is a collection of the works of Jesus Christ. <laughs> here's, here's my thought on this. 
I don't feel like Chad's just going to keep alternating cookie and cookie. So I think <laughs> now is the time to go twice cookie. So I'm going cookie. All right. Well, I did alternate. It is a cookie. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is eating or drinking loudly. <laughs> Next one, Turgle. <laughs> Burgle? Turgle. I'll spell it T-I-R-G-G-E-L. All right. I'm going to go kooky. Ooh, I am too turgly for the Turgle Club. <laughs> <laughs> you old 15-year-old master of disguise reference? <laughs> no one got that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll say kooky as well. That's... That's, that sounds made up. Uh, it's a cookie. <laughs> oh. It's a thin, hard, sweet Christmas biscuit from Switzerland. Uh, the next one is called Nice Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, okay. I'm going to feel real pissed off if I say it's a cookie and you go, no, it's just a biscuit that was made nicely. <laughs> I will say Nice Biscuit is a cookie. Just based on the obviousness, it's. I, I feel like it's a trick question. So I'm going to say, I'm going to feel like an idiot when it's actually the word biscuits in it. And it is a cookie, but I'm going to say cookie. <laughs> it is a cookie. Ah! Yeah. Biscuit. It is a plain coconut biscuit from the UK. Why would you even put that in the list? <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many turtles going around, Novak. Next is the Chewy Chips Ahoy. (laughs) I just like that it's called Nice Biscuit. Nice Biscuit. Good Biscuit. (laughs) Okay, next up, Novak, Snickersnee. The Snickersnee? All right, kooky. Sounds Dr. Seussian. Kooky. Geiger? Snickersnee? Uh, Kooky. Kooky. You're both right. It is kooky. It's a long knife. All right. Okay, Geiger, you're up. Bat Yam. The old bat nah, nah, Look nah, at the games nah, nah, on nah. that bat. <laughs> <laughs> bat game. <laughs> I'm bat game. <laughs> Actually, bat yam. Why? <laughs> bat, bat yam. <laughs> bat yam. Oh. That changes everything. <laughs> that's definitely a cookie. I also think the bat yam is a cookie. It is kooky. That's a city in Israel. Oh. That's a city? I need to brush up on my geography. Isn't it probably like bat yum then? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm going down to bat yam and just slap you in the face. (laughs) I can barely speak English and you expect me to speak uh, Israeli, Hebrew. I don't know, whatever it is. Cookie. All right. So up next, Anzac. A-N-Z-A-C. Anzac. All right. Cookie. (laughs) I don't even know why I'm thinking about it. Uh, I'll say cookie as well. This one was a trick question. It's both. It's a sweet biscuit named after the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. And it's also a holiday. Mm. Okay. Okay, only a couple more here. Six more. We'll just bang these out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next up, Gubbins. Gubbins? What the fuck am I doing with my life? Cookie. Let's go, Geiger. Say something. <laughs> we got six of these fucking things. <laughs> I'll say <laughs> I'll say kooky. All right, Geiger's right. It is a gadget with no value. Like this podcast? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Up next, this one I just had to uh, had to include. Couldn't resist. Cock. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, that's a real gubbins. But, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's spelled K A H K. Cock. I'm gonna go cookie just because I want there to be a cookie named Cock so bad. So I'm gonna say cookie. That's not how you spell cock. <laughs> you feel real dumb when you go, no, a cock is a penis, Geiger. <laughs> Novak, what do you say? I guess I'll say cookie, too. <laughs> it is a cookie. It's a small round cookie filled with a mixture of nuts and dates from Egypt. <laughs> yeah, I bet you it's full of nuts. Nuts? <laughs> Date paste, yeah. <laughs> it's a cookie. You use your nuts on dates. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, the Lincoln Biscuit. It has biscuit again in it, so I guess cookie. Well, I was fooled once by this biscuit term. I'm flying away from the biscuit this time. I'm saying kooky. All right, that also is a cookie. <laughs> oh, why am I? It's so obvious. It's a shortcake biscuit with a pattern of dots on it from the UK. Uh, the next one, Bath Oliver. Kooky. <sighs> uh, kooky. You are both wrong. It is um, a hard dry biscuit 
<laughs> invented by Dr. William Oliver of Bath in 1750. Sounds delicious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, last two. Next one is bum fuzzle. <laughs> Cookie. Cookie. It is a kooky. Uh, It means being confused or perplexed, which hopefully this quiz has left you. Is there an even, like, are are we within a point of each other? Mm, Let me total it up real quick. Nine, Geiger has nine, Novak, you have one, seven. So Geiger wins, but we'll do the last one. Okay. Joe Frogger. Joe Frogger? Yeah, Joe Frogger. Joe Frogger? Frogger? Is that the dad (laughs) of the video game, Frogger? Yep. (sighs) Who gives a fuck? Cookie. (laughs) (laughs) Novak? cookie cookie it is a cookie it's a molasses cookie invented by u.s slaves so i thought i'd end that on an upper (laughs) remember when uh, joe frogger fed that alpha core his cock (laughs) (laughs) the cookie (laughs) all while being watched on by dr william oliver (laughs) remember when she then took a lincoln biscuit and just rammed it up his ass All right, so that was an interesting segment. <laughs> uh, cookie or cookie? <laughs> let us know how many of those you got correct. Uh, Geiger, where can they let us know? Uh, you can let us know on Instagram, on YouTube, at you tried that on Twitter, hashtag you tried that as well. Uh, on Facebook, you tried that. Uh, our email is you tried that at gmail.com. Tell us all about your favorite. All, all your favorite Joe Froggers that you've tried in your life. Um, how many cacks you put in your mouth? Wait, maybe don't tell us that. <laughs> what? But all the different types of cookie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, this is terrible. But yeah, no. Uh, tell us all about it. What you think? What you don't like? What if you agree with our ratings? You don't agree? If you'd like us to try a snack, and most importantly, if you have a question for our mailbag, you can also reach out to us. On JoeFrogger.com. It's the original uh, website in honor of Joe Frogger slavery cookies. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about it, to be frank. I'm just going to walk away. All right. We've got one one chip left um, to vie for the chip championship. And it is the deep dish pizza. And it says it's inspired by Giordano's, which is that only in Chicago area? I believe so, yes. I think deep dish pizza in general is really just Chicago area. It's not really beyond that. They have some deep dish pizza places out here, but like for the people I know that like deep dish pizza, like there's a place called Zachary's, but everybody says it's like not as good as the stuff back in Chicago. So let's see if this chip actually tastes more like a deep dish pizza than a standard pizza. And I would say that it does somehow. I can really taste how deep the dish is. (laughs) This is... Hmm. An odd taste. This is a much stronger tomato flavor than the ketchup one did. Yeah. Would you think you'd be able to tell it was deep dish pizza without having been told? No. I would have guessed lasagna. Yeah. That's the flavor I would have guessed. It, yeah, it has like the spaghetti taste to it because of the tomato sauce. So deep dish pizza, you know, you got your layer of cheese and then a layer of like crushed tomato as a topping. And I don't think they put it, it's not like pepperoni or anything. It's just straight up cheese pizza. And it's got a buttery flavor, kind of like the crust a little bit, but mostly I taste the tomato. They're pretty, I don't know, they're pretty good, though. I think they taste more like a deep dish pizza than the bacon jalapeno ones did, like their thing. I think it's sort of odd how much it, how sort of accurate the, the taste is. I think it's pretty mm-hmm. good. As You know, it's obviously difficult to make a chip taste like an entire pizza, but I think this is maybe about as good as you can do. This gets the highest marks for flavor accuracy of the three flavors, for sure. They put deep dish pizza seasoning on it, which in the ingredients. And there's like garlic powder and stuff like that. Like I think to probably rep- replicate some of the, I mean, you put a little garlic in there and like maybe like a little chili po- like flakes or whatever that you would put on there. I don't know. I'm actually kind of impressed how they nailed it. All right. Bacon, how many times do I have to tell you to rate the chip? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> You got to say it the right way. You got to go bacon. Bacon. <laughs> Rate the chip. I burned my parents' house down. <laughs> <laughs> I faked the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> I killed an alpha whore. She's in my trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I invented slavery and forced people to invent Joe Froggers. <laughs> so... <laughs> I invented slavery. I came up with the original idea for it. Like I said, these have sort of the best flavor accuracy. They taste the most like what they're trying to do, but I still don't really like deep dish pizza. I will say these are probably actually the best of the three chips, which I definitely would not have predicted 
having said that, I still don't like them, so they're going to get a mild dislike, but I think they are the best of the three. All right, uh, dislike from Chad. I'm sort of impressed with the, the accuracy. It's a little too tomatoey. I did hate that ketchup one, but I do think these are okay. I'm going to go right down the middle with this one and do an indifferent to that. So a dislike and an indifferent. Geiger, what do you think? Wow. Um, I think these are probably my favorite of the three. And again, I think I'm indifferent to, as a, as Mr. Chip, I like wavy and regular chip alike. That doesn't really sway me too much. I love deep dish pizza, which is part of it. And because it tastes so much like it, I, I think it's really tasty. I would love it if they put a little pepperoni flavor on that, but just because I love pepperoni and now I'm getting greedy. So I actually really like these. I could eat a whole bag of them. I probably will if you give me another five minutes. I'd say I'd rank these higher than the – I gave the other – I gave the bacon jalapeno ones a like that. I would give these also a like that, but I would put them a notch higher than the – I don't love them, but I would put them a notch higher than the uh, bacon jalapeno ones. How many uh, cups of milk would you barter for each of these chips? Zero cups of milk because I don't drink milk. <laughs> hey, bacon, how much bacon would you give for these chips? <laughs> so the – the winner, by a, the slimmest of margins, if I've done my math correctly here, is the bacon-wrapped jalapeno popper. Yep. So right, we had, by basically a 10 to 9 score if you're doing points. So very closely edges out the deep dish pizza. Uh, the ketchup's really the only one we cannot, that none of us can recommend. It's bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, before we head out, guys, what's another crime that Bacon Boss com completed? <laughs> Bacon, what's happening? I started the War of 1812. <laughs> Bacon, what's happening? I just jaywalked. <laughs> I just ran the gamut of criminal activity. The War of 1812. <laughs> and jaywalked. He lived long enough to have crosswalks and started the War of 1812 and also had stoplights he had to worry about. This guy's about. been around forever. He's a jack of all trades. Bacon, I killed Lincoln and made him into a Lincoln biscuit. <laughs> Lincoln, I also killed JFK, but I tried to make him a biscuit. He just didn't taste good. <laughs> Did you say Lincoln? Lincoln. <laughs> Lincoln. Lincoln. I hate Lincoln. <laughs> he's, he's talking to Lincoln's corpse because he killed him. Lincoln, I have another president to join you. It's Kennedy. <laughs> I'm not going to turn him into a biscuit. <laughs> All right. Well, that will do it for our chip episode. And we will catch you next time when we'll be trying three brand new snacks. Juices. Yep. Lincoln.